Today's video is sponsored by Raycon and the new Raycon Everyday Earbuds. Quality earbuds can be very expensive as we all know, but Raycon earbuds offer you the same quality at a fraction of the price of the competition. Whether you're out there working out, jamming to some music at home, or whatever the case may be, Raycon earbuds has you covered with 8 hours of playtime and a 32 hour battery life. The new everyday earbuds are super comfortable and fit in your ear like a glove with a smooth oil look and feel, plus gel tips, and there's even a built in microphone as well, plus they come with the 45 day happiness return policy. Go click the link in the description box down below or go to buyraycon.com slash rgt85 to get 15% off your Raycon purchase right now and get some holiday shopping done early. Huge thank you to Raycon for sponsoring this video. So right now one of the hottest retro gaming systems that everyone seems to be talking about is of course the N64, partially due to the fact that the N64 is getting a resurgence on the Nintendo Switch's online service. Now I vividly remember my time with the N64 and I remember playing all of the great games, but I also remember playing a lot of the bad games, the worst games on the system. Now you commonly see these lists and you see games on there that it's like, okay, like Carmageddon 64, like okay, that's a bad game, but that's not a game that anyone played back in the day. Nobody cared about Carmageddon 64. So I'm talking about five of the worst Nintendo 64 games today that I have a personal story with. There's a personal story along with every one of these games that I will be telling. So if this is your first time on the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Be sure to like and share the video as well. But without any further ado, let's talk about five of the worst N64 games, each with a little story. So the first game on my list is a game that honestly doesn't pop up on a lot of people's N64 lists, which is why I question their validity when talking about these games, because it's WCW Nitro. Now most people say that WCW Backstage Assault is the worst wrestling game on the N64, but I completely disagree with that, because you could still have fun with Backstage Assault, and it had a good variety of characters, and it looked okay, but WCW Nitro was just absolute crap, like there was nothing redeeming about this game. Now this game of course came out after we got great games like WCW NWO World Tour and WCW NWO Revenge. Now these games were of course built on the Aki engine, but over on the PlayStation 1, you had WCW Nitro. So I remember one day, I was 12 years old, I went to the video store and I rented WCW Nitro with my best friend at the time, Pecker Dupree. Now that wasn't actually his name, we just called him Pecker Dupree because like Pecker was a funny word and he would always say it and his favorite rap artist at the time was JD, Jermaine Dupree. So Pecker Dupree, that's where it came from. Even my parents called him Pecker Dupree. It was kind of weird. But we were huge WCW fans. So we went and rented this game and we were like, did, did somebody like do a mountain of coke before making the gameplay in this game? The game is just so ridiculously fast that you can't even sit there and appreciate it. Now, I like arcade wrestling games. I think WrestleFest is one of the greatest wrestling games of all time, but there was still some pacing to that. You would do a move and a guy would actually, you know, stay down for more than a couple seconds. Where in Nitro, you would hit like the jackhammer, the dude would be up in a second. Scorpion Death Drop, dude's up in a second. Diamond Cutter, dude's up in a second. It's like, where, where's the fun in this game? Now, the best thing about the PlayStation 1 version of the game was of course the fact that when you would go to the character select screen there would be a little full motion video and a person talking to you whatever character you had had a little quip on the n64 this was completely removed wcw nitro is literally one of the worst games of all time i feel and it's one of the worst games on the n64 definitely the worst n64 wrestling game and me and pecker dupree we don't we don't like this game we don't like it at all the next game on my list is Mortal Kombat Mythologies. Now, Mortal Kombat was awesome back in the day. The digitized graphics really worked when it came to the fighting genre because nobody else was really doing that. When you look at the King of Fighters games and the Street Fighter games, they all used animated sprites, whereas Mortal Kombat along and used digitized sprites. Now, you could sit here and argue that yes, Street Fighter and King of Fighter were better fighting games than Mortal Kombat, but still, Mortal Kombat was hot. Everyone loved Mortal Kombat. And Mortal Kombat Mythologies was a rental for me for the game store, and once again, 
man, th th this game's terrible. Like, even 12-year-old me was like, what is wrong with this game? Who thought this was a good idea? And it's so simple to make this game good because they ended up doing it later on with Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks. You take a Final Fight style of gameplay and you put fighting characters in it. And there's a reason why Final Fight and Street Fighter go hand in hand because, of course, Final Fight has its roots in Street Fighter and vice versa and some of the characters from Final Fight ended up in Street Fighter. But it's such an easy philosophy to take a fighting game and fighting game characters and put them in an interesting beat em up style game. Mortal Kombat Mythologies looked okay when it wasn't in motion, but the motion in the game and the animation was absolutely terrible. It was extremely cryptic and there were so many cheap deaths. This was a game that I rented and literally returned the next day because I was like, this isn't fun. This is stupid. This is cryptic. This makes no sense. The PlayStation 1 version of the game at least had crappy CGI cutscenes, but this game, no, this game can burn in a fire. The next game on this list is a game that often, once again, isn't on a lot of people's lists, and I'm just like, yo, you don't end 64. If this game is not on your list, you don't end 64. You weren't there during the heyday. You weren't there playing all the games, because I remember renting this game, and I was just so mad. I was disgusted, because when you think about Nintendo, of course, you think about RPGs from the NES and the Super NES. That's kind of what they were known for back in the day, but Square decided to leave Nintendo because of the fact that Nintendo, of course, went with cartridge base instead of a CD-based game, and then you got Final Fantasy VII on the PlayStation 1, and of course, the rest is just history. Well, Pecker Dupree had a PlayStation 1, so I played a lot of RPGs with him over at his house. We played games like Final Fantasy VII, Brigandine, strategy RPGs, all sorts of fun stuff. And then I remember seeing Quest 64, and I was like, you know what? It's about time. It is about time the N64 got an RPG game. So me and Pecker Dupree on a weekend went to the video game store and rented Quest 64, and it was like, like, Brian, Brian, you are talking about a mythological adventure, and the person's name is Brian. Give me Lancelot. Give me, I don't know, Bartrium or something like that. Give me an old name, Brian? Brian, there's no, there's no magical Brian's in the world. I have asked just about every Brian that I know. Hey, can you do magic? Can you do water magic and fire magic? And they all say, no, what, what is wrong with you? Because of the fact that no Brian's do magic. And Quest 64, it's, it's a jumbled mess of an RPG. And this was literally the only RPG on the N64. Yes, there was Ogre Battle 64 as well, but that's a strategy game. You know, strategy RPGs and regular RPGs, they were a little bit different. But the, the, the battle system sucked. The graphics were like okay-ish at best. The story was absolutely abysmal. How Quest 64 is not on everyone's list is just ridiculous to me because you played Quest 64 over a game like Carmageddon. You rented Quest 64. You might have even bought Quest 64 because you were like, hey, I want to play a RPG on my N64. And this, this is the game you got. It was absolutely terrible. Once again, another horrible rental. I actually kept it for the full rental process because I tried to force myself to like it, but I just ended up going to Pecker Dupree's house and played his PlayStation 1 because he lived right down the street from me and we played some real RPGs. All right, and my final two games are where we start to get spicy because one of the games is on everyone's list and one of the games isn't on everyone's list, but it should be, especially when you hear my plight. The first game is, of course, Superman. Now, everyone knows Superman is absolutely abysmal. It looks horrible. It plays horrible. It's it's a garbled mess of a game, but Superman holds a special place of hatred in my heart because I remember that when I graduated from eighth grade, my family moved, so I was going to be starting high school in a new place, and I was not happy about that because I was leaving the aforementioned Pecker Dupree along with this chick I was dating at the time like life was good in eighth grade and now I have to restart all over again so to cheer me up my parents took me to the local blockbuster so that I could rent a video game and for some reason I wanted to rent Superman 64 but you know what it wasn't there that wasn't available there was actually a waiting list for this game and I was going to be third on the waiting list so I'm sitting there thinking to myself yo if I'm number three on this waiting list, this game's got to be hot as hell. This game has to be awesome. We didn't have the internet then. We had Nintendo Power, EGM, and GamePro. And everything I had seen in those magazines seemed okay. But now the fact that this game actually has a waiting list, well, it must be the hottest thing in the world. And then it was finally my turn to rent it. And I rented it and I played it. Now, I'm showing you guys some gameplay footage from World of Long Plays here, so I'm sure it looks absolutely fantastic, and the gentleman or lady who is playing this game is doing a fantastic job, but this, I, I never beat the first stage of the game. You go through the rings, you gotta, like, do the car thing. I never beat that. I never beat that. I kept the game the whole time, and I never beat it, and it was just, like, between that 
and moving. It was like the worst. It was the worst thing of my life. It is. It is something that I will never forget playing Superman 64. And everyone says, oh, Titus sucked. Look, Titus made that automobile Lamborghini game on the N64, which was a rental for me. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. So I'm not going to put this all on Titus. I'm going to put it on the fact that it was just a crappy game. Like, yes, there are other crappy games on the N64, but Superman 64 is literally one of the worst games of all time. And the fact that I had to wait, wait several weeks to rent this game just made it all that much crappier. And the final game on my list, this is one of the most heart-wrenching stories of all time, in my opinion, and one of the games that I, I hate the most. It's probably right up there with Virtual Highlight as my most hated game of all time, because I remember it well. Young RGT got a good report card. His mom said, hey, you want to go to Target and get a new N64 game for your good report card? And I was like, yes. All of my months of hard work at school have finally paid off, and now I'm getting rewarded for being a good student. So my mother took me to Target, and I'm looking around, I'm looking around, and there it is. It catches my eye like a diamond shining in the rough, Castlevania. And I'm like, oh man, Castlevania on the N64? How did I not know about this? Now, like I said, I had things like EGM, Game Pro, and Nintendo Power, but still, games fell through the cracks. And while I had an NES as a very young kid, I never had a Super NES, so I didn't get to play a lot of Castlevania. I would play it when I'd go over to friends' houses, but I never owned my own Castlevania, even though I should have tried to get Bloodlines on the Genesis. I don't even think I knew Bloodlines existed at that time. I mean, I was like 12, you know, like I'm 12 at this point. So you don't really have all the video game knowledge you have now, but I'm like, holy hell, Castle freaking Vania on my N64 and I'm sitting there thinking I'm like yo think of how Super Mario went from 2D to 3D it's gonna be something like that it's gonna be something absolutely magical so that was the game I picked Castlevania for my N64 and initially I, I didn't hate it I didn't hate it you know I was under the impression that it would be a better game obviously the graphics were not all that great I liked some of the more open areas you had going on you know when you first start out the game little little skeletons on the motorcycles didn't really make sense but you know it wasn't too bad but then then he got inside the castle and it did, it did, and the worst part of it was was that over on the PlayStation 1, you had Symphony of the Night. So Pecker Dupree is over there playing Symphony of the Night, and I'm stuck with Castlevania 64, the hedge maze, the stupid part of the game where you got to get the potion. I think it's a Mandagora potion, and you got to take it from one end of the castle to the other end of the castle, but you can't jump, and you can't use your whip, and you just have to go on this little platform. It was terrible, terrible, terrible. I hate that game. I hate that game with all of my heart and all of my soul because I wasted, I wasted a good report card on Castlevania. And you know, there's people that in, oh, in retrospect, Castlevania 64 is not that bad. No, it is that bad. Okay. When you were 12 and this is the game you got over other quality titles for the N64, you hated it. You hated everything in the world and you hated everything about this game. So Castlevania 64, it, it still haunts me to this day. There's an old video on this channel of me doing a review on that game. I hate that game then. I hate that game now. And I'll hate that game until I die. <sighs> Alrighty. So those are five of the worst N64 games of all time, each with a little story attached to them about why I hate them so much. So let me know in the comment section down below what you think about these games, if you have any memories of playing them or anything like that, and what your five worst N64 games of all time are in the comments down below. And as always, guys, thank you for checking out this video. If you are new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Be sure to like and share the video. Once again, a huge thank you to Raycon for sponsoring this video. Check out the link in the description box down below to get you some Raycon products. The earbuds are absolutely fantastic and I, I don't know why I haven't owned earbuds until now but I'm glad I have the Raycon ones because they're absolute bangers and as always guys I'll catch you guys on the next video later